Hello, and welcome to Tip of the Week by the BIMGuys.com and CAD Tech Seminars. Today, we're going to talk about how to create a custom elevation tag. In this instance, I'm going to go up top to the View tool. I'm going to drop down and choose Elevation. I can use a typical interior elevation, exterior elevation, or a framing elevation. In this instance, I'll use an, uh, a framing elevation, just so you can see something a little different, right? Now, I can grab this tag here, and you'll notice when we go ahead and put it in, I'll do it again. Uh, framing elevation, you choose the frame, framing elevation that you want. So if it's a framing elevation or an interior elevation, you'll notice it uses the same graphics. I'm going to go ahead and delete this one out. Okay, and we'll be working on this one. The client wants one that looks actually erect, uh, looks something like a section tag, so we're going to go ahead and edit this one to do that. The first thing I'm going to do is actually select the tag here, and what you'll notice is up top we do not have an edit feature to edit the families. Being this is, a nest, in essence, a nested family, you can't just edit it by going up to the edit area. So how do we go about and edit this? What we're going to do is we're going to select the tag, and you'll see it's coming over here and it says interior elevation. What we're going to do is hit edit type. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this, and this could be an interior elevation. I'm just going to call it framing elevation for the client I'm doing it for. Framing elevation. There we go. Framing elevation. Hit OK. Now you'll notice that it's using a certain elevation tag. The current tag it's using is circle half-inch circle. So let's go ahead and click on that. And you notice that it opens up another dialog box. So this is actually a type. Half-inch circle is a type that actually contains an elevation mark. This is the family. So let's go ahead and take a look. We'll duplicate this. And again, I'm going to call it uh, framing elevation. Ah, so much for my typing, huh? All right. Framing elevation. Let's hit OK on that. Now, We've given it the name, and then we come here and we actually click on it. You'll notice that there is a few families and have some subfamilies of that. The current one it's using is actually elevation mark circle filled arrow view name. Okay, now if I go to filled arrow, it's going to use the arrow but not have the name. So you can see we have these different ones here. So I'm going to actually use the one that says uh, body circle filled arrow. Now where do these reside? Let's go ahead and get out of this. I'm going to hit OK. So I have my new framing and I have a new framing and I hit OK. So I can come in here and choose framing elevation. I'm going to scroll down in my browser and I'm going to scroll down to families, expand that out, and we can now start looking for that actual tag. Now, if you want to look for it easily, uh, you could go to annotations and scroll through it, but you also have the ability here to click on where it says families, right click, and then do a search. So if I'm going to type in circle, what we should pull up as I start to hit next, it should start to show up and there it is. So we can see the family. That search engine can be quite helpful. At this point, I'm going to go ahead, right-click, and I'm going to hit Edit. Once it, the, edit, the, edit, the, the editor opens up, I can come over here and adjust maybe some of the aspects here of this family. You'll see it says Arrow Filled. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK on that. Now, you'll see it's showing the Arrow Filled. So if I come down here, you have different types. And so it says Arrow Filled, Filled Arrow, and then it uses Filled Arrow. So you could, you know, you don't really have to mess with this, but this is the setup that it's just actually using. Now, what I'm going to do is I've got it set to filled arrow. I hit OK. So that's what it's showing here. Now, I don't want to mess up the existing stuff in the actual uh, my Revit families or in my Revit project. So I'm going to go File, Save As. And then once I go to File, Save As, we'll go what I want to save it as a family. We pick a location. In this instance, I'm going to go to Desktop, Revit Training, the BIM guys. And I'll save it here. At this point, we're going to say, I'm going to call it with a different name. I'm going to say Framing in front of it, and I want to follow what's there already. So we got framing, space, elevation, mark, body, circle. Okay, save. So now I've actually saved that family. So this family now, you'll see up top, is framing elevation. Perfect. Now at this point, we're going to start to refine what we see here. Now this family actually has nested elements in it, and we'll get to that in a moment. But first thing we'll see is this tag. The tag here says uh, A101. Now with A101, but the client is requesting that this information is put in the box and looks more like a section tag. So we're going to take this and we go to edit label. When we open up the edit label, you'll notice that it says sheet number. Now we also, besides sheet number, we also want to add in something else. But if we add it here, it may not work properly. So I'm actually cancel out of this. I'm actually going to wipe this out. I know it sounds a little crazy. And I'm going to go to this subfamily and I'm going to hit edit family now. Now inside of here, this is the actual arrow head, as you can see, like so. Now, a couple of things I'll do is, first of all, I'm going to change the graphic. So we'll go up top, and we'll edit, let's say, masking region. So I'll pick, pick and see what this is. So this is filled region black. I'm going to use one of my favorite commands called create similar, 
And now you'll see we're starting and using that tool. I'm going to come off this edge here. I'm going to come straight down at the proper angle. I'm going to come over. I'm not really sure where it's going to tie in yet, but I'll hit enter. And then I'm going to use the three point arc. So I'll say center point, bam. And then I'm going to pick the circle here and then I'm going to roll it down to crash here. Now at this point, I'll clean it up using trim the corner. Pick those two like so. And now when I hit finish, you'll see that it actually fills that in. I'll now take this graphic and I will mirror it about the midpoint of here. And there's the graphic. So at this point we have the graphic. Now we do have up top is some other information. Now we have the number one. We have view name and reference view name. In this instance, we don't need this anymore. And this is our special head, okay? Now you'll notice that we're editing the elevation mark point of circle. This is a subset of the other. So before we actually go any further, we should have actually done this earlier, is go file, save as again. So I'll go file, save as, save as what? A family. I'm gonna put it in the same folder as before. I'm gonna again call this, uh, Framing, okay, it's going to be my framing elevation mark pointer, and we can just go with that, and we hit save. So now the subfamily has been named different, so it doesn't screw up anything else in the project. So I'm going to go ahead and clean some things out. For instance, I don't need the name. Now when I click on this, you'll see this is a certain aspect. What is it? I come up here, and that's the reference label. All right, I'm not going to need that. What I do want is number and I want the actual uh, sheet. So I'm gonna take this element here, I'm gonna actually drag it down to right here, and I'm gonna go ahead, grab it, and say, okay, let's go ahead and take a look, edit the label, and besides number one, we're gonna say the sheet number, and we're gonna pop it on in there. At this point, I'll add a break, so it rolls, and I'll hit okay. At this point, I'll move it to the approximate location where I want, and there it is. Now, this element happens to be opaque. If I grab it and hit edit type, you'll see it's opaque. I'm gonna switch it from opaque over to transparent. Hit OK on that. Now you can see that uh, the reference plane through it. I could tweak it a little bit more. You notice the blue dots there. I could nudge it up. I'm using the arrow keys there. You can use move either. Now at this point, I'm going to go ahead and save that because that's the uh, proper head I want to use. I'm going to load it into the project. And even though it says project, I'll load it into the body circle. So I'll highlight that. Hit OK. Now it's going to bring it in. And you'll notice that it is, an, um, it is actually coming in here. Uh, and I want to place it. I'm just going to go ahead and delete it. Now I'm going to take this one out and I'm gonna replace them now. So I'm gonna say, grab these guys here, and I'm gonna say this one, this one, this one, and this one. I'm not gonna use these anymore. What I'm gonna use is, I'm actually gonna use the one I just created. In this instance, filled arrow. Now at this point, you'll notice that we've got some, uh, some graphics that are kind of overlapping each other a little bit, but that's fine. We're only gonna use one of these as we go along. At this point, I'm gonna draw a line across, create, create a line from the point here to point here. So what we've done is we've now created this symbology, and I'm going to go ahead and hit File, and we'll go ahead and save this. So what we did was, uh, I did move a bit fast, but I wanted to make sure that I didn't take up too much of your time. Let's load it back into the project now. When we load into the project, it says, which one do you want to load it into? I'll say Project 1. Hit OK. So it loads it in. Now, you don't see much change because, remember, this was a nested family. I'm going to grab this graphic, and you'll see it says Framing Elevation. I'm going to drop this down or hit Edit Type, and you'll see when I'm using framing elevation, what elevation tag do I want to use? Well, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to say I want to use framing elevation. Now, we set that earlier, but this time, instead of using the elevation mark, the standard one, we're going to scroll on down and you'll actually see using the framing elevation mark filled arrow. When I hit OK on that, what you're going to see is when we hit OK, OK, it actually fills it in. Now, we're not seeing anything because, well, we haven't sheeted anything up yet. But let's go ahead and put this thing on a sheet and see what happens. So this is the interior uh, or a framing elevation. I'll scroll on down. We'll hit the sheets. We'll have to go up, sorry. Let's go to first floor sheet. Doesn't really matter which one we're working on. And we're going to bring this framing elevation onto the sheet. We bring it on the sheet. We drop it, place it. Now let's see what's happening. We'll go back to our uh, level one. And notice it's actually showing the information. So if I have more of these, I'm going to grab this, CS it, place another one like so. If I grab this element, this is a uh, framing elevation. So I'll go up top and let's give it a, a test drive. Drop this down. I want a framing elevation. Which one I'm going to use? Notice I have three of them. So this could be for building, framing, anything. I hit interior elevation. Uh, nope, that's actually not what I want. I want a framing elevation. I'm gonna come right here and I get close and you'll see that picks up where we're going. So I'm gonna come here and pick it uh, at this point. And there's our framing elevation. Let's verify. There is the elevation itself. And now let's go ahead and put this one on a sheet. So we'll scroll down. You can see it sitting right there. Here it is. We'll now go to the sheet itself. 
and we'll bring it and put it on the sheet. And there we should have our framing elevations. So that is how we can manipulate the framing elevation or the elevation tag in Revit to make it work for us. Hope you enjoyed it. Check us out on the web at thebimguys.com. Thank you.